Y'all know I wrote a book, right? It's called Buy a Game and it's free. Click the link down there, you got it. Stayallday.com Communication skills, talking to people, influencing, winning friends and influencing people. Is that a skill that you would like to develop? Ladies and gentlemen, if that's something you want to get better at, that's a skill you want to develop, if that's something that you think will help your business, help your relationships, help your social life, help your sports performance, help you better run your business, influence your employees, influence your bosses. What's up to everybody? Let me know your name and where you from. Please swipe and share. And I appreciate y'all tapping the screen, making those hearts come up over there. I appreciate the hearts. I appreciate the love. This is Dre all day. Are you looking to improve your communication skills? Do you want to get better at talking to people? What up, Dallas? You want to get better at talking to people. Get better at just being able to influence other people to do the things that you want them to do with your words. Not because they got to do it. Not because you control their check. What's up, King from Atlanta? Not because you control their paycheck or their job status. Not because they trying to get something from you specifically. Not because you're bigger than them and they're scared of you but just because they want to. Do you wanna be able to influence people to do things for you because they wanna do them, not because they have to do them? That's a skill that I work with people on and we are gonna talk about that right now. Getting people to want to do it. Funny thing is, what's up Ben, checking in from Iowa. This is Dre all day, checking in from South Florida. And I was just having a conversation with my, my vice president of education from Toastmasters Miami Beach. And she was telling me, she was talking to me about one time where I had kind of influenced one of our members. Y'all know what Toastmasters is, a place where people go to work on professional, not professional, but public speaking. And there was one of our members who had came to the meeting once and he didn't really want to participate. He didn't have a role. He was just going to come and just watch. But I'm like, dude, why'd you join the club if all you want to do is just come and watch? You're not going to participate. He's like, man, I just want to watch. I don't want to participate. And I talked to him for a few minutes in front of a few people that were listening to this conversation. And I was able to influence him into actually wanting to participate. And my vice president, her name's Anna, she was like, you know, I remember that conversation that you had with that guy. And you kind of influenced him and made him want to take, take a part in it. And I was talking to her about leadership. And one of the things I told her is that when you're in a volunteer organization, when you're working with a volunteer army, ladies and gentlemen, see, people think leadership means you ever know how somebody calls himself a boss? <clears throat> Excuse me. You ever know how somebody calls himself a boss? And that's like their way of saying they the leader, they the guy in charge, they the head person in charge. Any of y'all familiar with that terminology? You know, I know in rap music and hip hop culture, we use it all the time. When somebody says boss, that means I'm in charge. I got the most money. I got the most power. I tell everybody what to do and what not to do. I cut the checks. That's what people mean when they say boss. But what y'all have to understand is that when you're in a leadership position as a boss, and other, yeah, my Instagram is at Dre Baldwin. When you're in a leadership leadership position as a boss, or any of you have a job, if you have a job and you have a boss, like a supervisor, somebody who can look over your shoulder and tell you what to do, tell you what not to do, the person who will come in, you're gonna be in trouble if you don't do the job you're supposed to be doing or you don't show up to work, that type of boss, or maybe you're that boss. Maybe you're the manager and everybody looks at you like that. Like, yo, if you don't come to work, or I mean, if they don't come to work, they don't do their job the right way or they slacking off at work, they know if you find out that it's gonna be trouble, right? Y'all know what I mean when I'm talking about a boss or a supervisor position. What people don't really understand about leadership is this very important point. See, when you're in a leadership role and you're the boss or the supervisor, I that means people have to listen to you. People listen to you because they have to. Like if I'm the boss and we work at McDonald's and I'm the shift manager and I schedule the shift and all y'all working for me and you don't flip the hamburgers the right way or you don't take the fries out like you're supposed to or you don't clean the bathrooms or sweep the floor the way I told you to, what can happen? I can fire you. You can lose your job if you don't do what I said. So I have leverage over you. That's being a boss. That's being a supervisor. What y'all have to understand is that when you're a boss or a supervisor, that does not necessarily mean that you are a leader. I'm going to say that one more time. When you're a boss or a supervisor, that doesn't mean that you're a leader. Why is that? That's because people only listen to you. when you're, If you're at work, any of you got a job, next time you go to work and people... My Instagram is at Dre Baldwin. First name, last name. Can somebody write my Instagram name out there if a person asks me for my Instagram name? But back to the topic. When you have a boss or you are a boss at a job, 
The only reason people listen to you because if they don't, they lose their paycheck. So they're not really listening to you. They're listening to their paycheck. You just happen to represent the person who controls the check. They don't have, they don't really, they might not really like you. You're not really, you might not really be that great of a leader. You might not really have that much influence. You don't have good communication skills or power of persuasion. It just so happens that you're the boss at work. So in order for me to get my check, I gotta listen to your ass. I might not even like you, but I gotta listen to you. I've, how many of you ever had a boss you didn't like? How many of you ever worked at a job with a boss that you just did not like? How many of you ever been a boss at a job and you know there were people who worked there who did their job adequately, but you know they didn't really like you on a personal level? All of us have been in that situation before, right? So what y'all have to understand is when somebody calls himself a boss because they control the money, that does not make you a leader because people are only listening to you because they have to. So the thing that I was explaining to Anna, this woman I'm talking to, she's a vice president of education at Toastmasters is this. If you really want to exert leadership, you want to practice your leadership skills and show people how much of a leader you really are, what you need to do is lead a volunteer army. Volunteer army means when you're at the head of a group of people who have, you have no leverage over those people. That means they have no reason why they have to listen to you or follow you or do anything that you say. For example, if you join a volunteer organization, what's a volunteer, let's say a church, right? Let's say you join a church volunteer organization and you become the head of some committee at the church. Nobody there is getting paid by you. You don't, you don't cut the paychecks. You don't sign the checks. You can't fire nobody. Nobody loses their job if they don't listen to you. See, when you're in that type of organization, that's when you can see if you're really a leader. Because when people don't have to listen to you, they don't have to follow you, they don't have to do anything you say, but they do it anyway, that's when you're leading. Let me repeat that one more time so everybody catches that. When people follow you, listen to what you say, are they're influenced by your influence, do what you ask them to do, even though they don't have to, you have no leverage over them, that's when you're exerting leadership. Leadership has nothing to do with checks and money. See, if you pay everybody, see, if you walk into a room and you're the one who signs all 10 people in that room's checks and they do what you say, then yes, you are a boss. You are definitely a boss as you're cutting the checks. Don't get me wrong. Don't misconstrue this point saying that being a boss is worthless. It means something. If you're the one cutting the checks, you, you have say in everything. You say how everything goes if you're the one cutting the checks. But cutting the checks does not make you a leader. A leader is a person who is followed by people who don't have to follow them. That's what leading is. If y'all ever look at animals, animals, like actual animals, humans are animals too, but y'all know what I mean, animals like dogs or wolves or lions. Those type of animals don't have to follow. They don't have to follow the leader of those packs. That's real leadership right there because animals don't reason. Animals don't, they don't know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They don't rationalize things. They don't have the ability to see into the future or look back into the past. All animals do is focus on the moment and they choose to follow somebody. That's real leadership when you have that leader of the pack. And human beings are the same way when we distill it down past all the, the big thinking and all the rationalization and all the stuff that gets in our way because of the big brains, big developed brains that we have, ladies and gentlemen. So you gotta understand, yeah, titles don't always mean something. I mean, somebody said they don't think titles mean anything. Titles do mean something. Let's be clear, titles do mean something because listen, if I start a company and I hire 10 people and I'm paying each one of you $100,000 a year, that, that title of boss, that means something. Because guess what? If you don't do what I say or you tell me my title doesn't mean nothing, I can fire you and there goes your $100,000. So it does mean something to be a boss. It does mean something to be the guy writing the checks. Don't get it construed. Don't get that messed up. You the guy writing the checks, you got a lot of power. But that doesn't make you a leader. What I'm talking about is leadership. Leadership is when people follow you even when they don't have to. So if you want to see if you're really a leader, all you got to do is try to get some people to follow you who have no reason to have to listen to you. You have no influence over them. You can't do nothing to them. You have no leverage. You don't control their checks. You can't beat them up. You can't hurt their lives in any way, shape, or form, but they still follow you and listen to you, and they, they are still respective, respectful of your influence. That's when you're leading. Everybody understand what I just said right there? That's what it means when you're leading. Do I got any questions? I see some, I'm seeing some comments. I'm driving right now, so I can't look at everything. But I'm looking at the comments now. So what are the comments? Anybody got a question? I'm still driving, but I'm looking at the comments at the same time. Multitasking, baby. My name is Dre All Day. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a professional speaker. I'm author of five books. One of the books that I'm putting out this year is going to be on this exact topic that I'm talking about. It's going to be on communication. 
communication with people. It's going to be about people skills because I know so many people who don't have people skills. What's going on, JNC412? Yes, I'm always being safe first. Y'all got to understand that with Periscope, y'all got, here's both of my hands. I'm not holding the phone. So me talking to y'all on Periscope is the same as if I had somebody sitting in the passenger seat and I'm talking to them. It ain't no different. <laughs> Only difference is when I look down at the, I look down, I glance and try to catch y'all comments. Yeah, the seatbelt's on. Seatbelt, seatbelt safety first. Seatbelt save lives. That's absolute truth. I know people whose lives have been saved by seatbelts. You need to work on your people skills? Good, because I'm writing a book on people skills that will be coming out this year, 2016. It's going to be all about people skills. Let me tell y'all a story, matter of fact. I'm going to tell y'all a story this guy was talking to the other day. He didn't have people skills. <laughs> What's the name of the podcast I was on? I got my own podcast. I've been on a whole bunch of podcasts, actually. If you go to dreallday.com, go to the About section on my website, there's a link that says Press. Click on that, and you'll see links to all the podcasts I've been on. I've been on, like, 20 different podcasts. But I got my own now. If you go to Athlete on Fire, do I have a girlfriend? Yes, I do. If you go to the Athlete on Fire podcast, anywhere that you listen to podcasts, Athlete on Fire, I have my own podcast on their network. It's called Athlete on Fire. Just look for the ones that say Dre All Day. So y'all know who I am, Dre All Day. Look at that. And there's another one. Y'all know who Grant Cardone is? Any of y'all familiar with Grant Cardone? Sales guy. He wrote a book called The 10X Rule. He wrote another book called Seller Be Sold. Another book called If You're Not First, You're Last. He wrote another one called, I think it's called Sell to Survive, something like that. None of y'all, y'all not all familiar with Grant Cardone? Well, look him up. He's on Periscope too. He's not on right now, but he's a, he's a speaker. He's a sales expert. He does sales training. He sells a lot of stuff. Really good guy. I have a podcast on the Grant Cardone. I have a podcast on the Grant Cardone TV network. That first episode didn't come out yet on the podcast. But if y'all want to see my show on the Grant Cardone network, go to dreallday.com slash GCTV. That's Grant Cardone TV, GCTV. dreallday.com slash GCTV. That'll take you to my show on the Grant Cardone TV network. Now they telling me my battery's about to die. What's up with my charger here? All right, so that's... That's what I'm doing. That's enough about me. But that book on people skills, communication. Oh, yeah, I meant to tell y'all a story. I see that comment, whoever that is, but that comment is way too long for me to read while I'm driving 80 miles per hour right now. So I can't read that whole comment. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to tell y'all this story. This guy contacted me the other day. He texted he text me, actually. I don't even know how the hell he got my number. But anyway, he texted me. And he said, yo, Dre, all right, are we good? All right, he said, yo, Dre, I, I see that you're a speaker and I see that you do good things. I think he followed me on social media or something. He lived in Miami and he was like, thank you. He was like, I see you're a speaker and you do good stuff in social media. And I think like minds should connect because I'm in, I'm in the same wavelength. I'm into all that personal development. You know, I've been a speaker before too. And I think me and you should get together because I do this and I do that. He, posted a couple links this is in the text message so a couple things he does that i wasn't really concerned with and then he said well i got this business thing going on that i think will be exciting to you when do you think you will have 30 to 60 minutes for us to sit down and talk this is all he said in the first text message and i don't know this guy so i'm looking at his message like who the hell is this guy i don't know this dude he said his name but i know i didn't know him because i remember people if i meet you and i put your name if i meet you i put your name and number on my phone first of all his name wasn't in my phone and second of all, he said his name. I didn't recall the name. So I knew I didn't know this dude. But anyway, this is what he says. He ends it by asking me, when do I have 60 minutes to sit down with him and talk about some opportunity that he thinks will be exciting to me? All right, so first of all, let me tell y'all what went wrong in that. All right, he might even be watching this right now. He should be watching so he can learn how to do business better. First of all, if you don't know somebody, if you don't know somebody, you don't open your conversation by asking them to give you something. Because see, he's asking me for my time. See, when you ask somebody else for their time, ladies and gentlemen, you have to have a damn good reason for them to give it to you. Never ask anybody for their time without giving them a very good reason to give you time. And if you don't have a good reason, then you should keep opening, the, you should keep having a conversation until you can learn something about them that you can relate to whatever it is you want to talk about that makes them want to trade their time for your information. And all of this, everything that I'm saying right now, you ain't got to memorize this. This is all going to be in my book on people skills. It's coming out in 2016. So that's the first thing he said. I replied to him and said, um, I don't think I know you. I don't think we ever met. You know, where do I know you from? And he said, 
this is what he said because remember his first message he said we met before right so i'm like i don't think i know you where we meet so then he replies and said we met on social media <laughs> so i'm like all right dude social media does not mean meeting like all of you who's watching this if we never shook hands before we've never met I, i'm not to say you don't know who i am dude. you don't know me we haven't met we never shook hands i know i don't know this dude it's a guy too i know i don't if i meet a dude i'm gonna remember the name and face if we exchange info how again how he got my number i have no idea but anyway i'm like i don't think i met you so he told me his name again and he said yeah i think we met on social media blah 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 we should, we should get together because you know it's kind of like and this is the next thing he said in his text and i'm like dude you know tell me what your business is because he just said i had this exciting opportunity it might be interesting to you so i'm like well what is it tell me what your business is and we might be able to sit down and talk about this opportunity and then he says well listen you know we need to get together Dre, because similar minds think alike it's kind of like he said have you ever read think and grow rich by napoleon hill and yes i have read the book i didn't reply but this is all part of his message again he's writing me in paragraphs he's like you ever read think and grow rich by napoleon hill you know how they had a principle of the mastermind when two great minds come together and all this two great minds come together in worst case scenario they'll be able to exchange some ideas and help each other best case scenario a third great mind will be formed and now you had this mastermind thing going on and this is all he's saying in his text because he's trying to persuade me to sit with him for 60 minutes so he can tell me about this great opportunity whatever the hell this opportunity is mind you he still hasn't told me what it is so then i say to him i might do in order for me to sit down with you first of all i need to know what your opportunity is tell me what it is so then he says well the thing is I would like to tell you, but it's very visual. We got to sit down because a lot of things that you got to see, a lot of concepts that you wouldn't understand if I just tried to say it in words. And then he keeps texting me. He's talking about this. He's talking about this mastermind thing, talking about when you got 60 minutes, talking about when can we sit down so we can talk business and like minds think alike and all this other bullshit he's talking about. So finally, as he's texting me, I'm like, you know what, forget it. See, I'm the type of person, and this is something I'm gonna cover in my People Skills book that comes out this year. I'm the type of person that goes straight to the source. I'm not gonna have a back and forth text message debate with nobody. If we, if we can text each other, we can just get on the phone and settle everything real quick. So I called this guy. Mind you, let me, let me mind you in this story, this guy texts me and he's trying to get me to meet with him to see whatever it is he wanna talk about. He never called me. He could have just called me from the beginning, just being like, yo, Dre, you don't know me and I don't know you, but I heard about you through a mutual person. I got your number this way. Anyway, I want to talk to you because blank. And maybe I would have been interested. But this guy texts me and he's telling me all these things, trying to convince me that I need to sit with him because of Napoleon Hill. <laughs> so I finally called this guy, right? I call him and he's like, hey, hey, Dre, what's going on? He got this like this nervous chuckle in his voice because he knows how dumb he was sounding his text messages. And then I'm like, yeah, yeah, what's your name again? And he told me how to pronounce his name. And I'm talking to this guy, and then this is what he says. This, this is the first dumb thing he says in the conversation, on the phone, that is. He says, so what was it that you had a question about? That's what he said to me. He said, what was it that you had a question about? And I'm like, dude, I don't have any questions about anything, dude. You text me. You coming to me, asking me to meet with you. Who the hell are you? And what the hell do you want? And what the hell is your business that you want to talk about? So that's what I'm asking him. So I'm like, dude, I don't have any questions. I just want you to, I'm trying to end this conversation and see what our next steps are. Either I'm never gonna to speak to you again, or maybe we're gonna have a conversation about something, but I wanna know what the hell you want. So I get him on the phone and he's like, yeah, yeah, I think we met through Facebook, blah, blah, blah. So I pull up Facebook, I'm on the computer as I'm talking to him. And we're, we are friends on Facebook. So that's, I think he got my number somehow, maybe somebody he knows or something like that. But I know I had never met this guy because I'm looking at his pictures on Facebook. And I'm like, I know 100% sure I've never met this dude in my life. So I'm talking to this dude and I'm like, yo, what is this? What's this thing you want me to sit down with you for? He's like, well, it's visual. You know, I can't tell you over the phone and this, that, and the third. And then he starts talking about, well, the reason why it might be good for you, Dre, is because you're a professional speaker. You know, you like to empower people and help other people when you share your messages. So this might be a good way for you to empower people and help other people with your message. You know, because we're both speakers. And he said, well, you know, me, I haven't really been a speaker that for that, that recently. I haven't been doing a lot of speaking recently, but you know, I study Les Brown. I've been studying Tony Robbins for 15 years. And he's going on and on about all his, I guess what he considers to be his credibility for why I need to listen to him talk which wasn't working. But anyway, I said to him, finally, I said, listen, dude, if you're a speaker, right, you're a speaker and you're talking to me because we should, we should connect. We should be eye to eye because we're both speakers. 
why don't you speak right now and tell me what the hell it is that you want to talk about if I'm interested and we'll figure out a time to meet because listen I'm a businessman I'm always open to what's going on business wise doesn't mean I'm going to do it but I'm open to listening if somebody else who's a business person a business person who I respect and they got something going on I may at least listen to what they're doing doesn't mean I'm going to do it doesn't mean I'm going to commit at all but I will at least listen to what you got going on so that's what I said to him. I said, like, listen, I'll listen to what you got going on, but you got to at least give me a reason to listen. Because men, mind you, he's asking me for my time. And my time is more valuable than he can't buy my time. So he has to give me a good reason to want to sit down with him, a guy that I don't know, and see what he, he has to say. Because he has no no relationship capital. So he can't trade in on, yo, we friends, come sit with me. Like somebody who's one of my good friends says, yo, Dre, come sit with me because I'm doing something I want you to hear about. I'm going to do it. Why? Because that's my man. Or that's my my buddy. That's somebody I know. We went to school together. We did some business together. I got a reason to listen to this guy. We got some relationship bond. But I have no idea who he is. So you can't just go to somebody you don't know and say, yo, come give me 60 minutes of your time just because. That makes no sense. So finally he says, well, you know, it's visual. I can't really tell you over the phone, blah, blah. But he just kept saying the same bullshit. So I'm like, dude, I'm going to have to politely decline your request. So And that, that was pretty much the end of the conversation. Then this guy texts me again today. And this is what he says. This is Then he says something else stupid. This is the last dumb thing he said. He texts me and says, well, listen, Dre, I happen to, I know that, you know, the things that you, he said, the reason I reached out to you is because, you know, great minds think alike and we can have this synergy because we're both about empowering and being positive and speakers and blah, blah, blah. He's just throwing all this stuff against the wall. None of it is sticking. And then he says, well, what I, what I did, Dre, because you were so insistent, I didn't realize I said it like two times. I said you were so insistent on seeing some information before you committed to sitting with me. This is this is the dumb thing he said. He said I went out of my way and went and found some information for you to look at on video. And then he posted a link to this video. And he said after you see this video, if you're interested, let me know. And if not, just text me back the words "not interested." I didn't do anything. I didn't reply to him. I didn't block his number. I didn't say anything. I haven't decided if I'm going to even respond or not. But anyway, the, the crazy thing is this. First of all, he texted me and said he went out of his way to find a link on the internet. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir, for putting in so much strenuous work and energy to find a link off the internet and text it to me. I can never, I can never imagine somebody working that hard just for me. First of all. <laughs> second of all. <laughs> second of all. <laughs> Whatever's in that video, he could have told, he could have given me a synopsis. See, this is all part of the sales. This is all part of sales, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm doing a book on people skills. I'm also doing a book on sales. And a book that I put out on sales this year is going to be about kind of like I did a video a couple of days ago here on Periscope talking about cold calling. And cold calling is, is the key of sales because cold calling means it doesn't necessarily mean you on the phone. It just means when you're talking to another person, you're able to, within the first 15 to 30 seconds of a conversation with somebody capture their interest so that they want to know more about who you are and what you're doing that's what cold calling is we call it and some people in sales might call it a pitch like a baseball pitches pitching pitching is when you take let's say 30 to 60 seconds at the longest 30 to 60 seconds you tell somebody who you are what you're doing and they're interested enough that they want to know more they want to know more not you are forcing them to know more not you're asking them to give you an hour so you can tell them about something that you won't even tell them about in the moment that they want to know more and if you don't have a good pitch if you don't have a good if you're not good at selling you're not good at cold calling getting people interested in what you're doing you lack people skills you lack communication skills these are basic life skills ladies and gentlemen it has nothing to do with being in a sales job it has nothing to do with being any type of entrepreneur or anything these are basic people skills because listen if you go to the mall now you meet an attractive girl how much time do you have and you go talk to her you go speak to her how much time do you have to say something that captures her interest that makes her think she want to talk to you before she's not interested no more you ain't got 10 minutes you ain't got 30 minutes you don't have an hour you got about 15 to 30 seconds to say something that gets her interested in talking to you Britney Beauty TV I got you I'm gonna take care of you this year baby Work, watch 2016 my sales book my people skills book is going to talk about how people can get better at sales because sales is not just about sales is not about you selling a product or service in exchange for money sales is getting other people to buy into your ideas and pay attention to you because when somebody's giving you 60 minutes of their time what are they giving you they're giving you their attention and what do you do with attention you pay attention y'all get y'all get what i'm saying here see sales is not about selling things for money 
sometimes you're going to sell things for attention because if nobody's paying you attention they can't pay you money you got to pay attention to somebody to pay them money right the last thing you purchased i don't care if it was a cheeseburger if it was a car if it was a cell phone you had to be paying attention to what you were buying in order to buy it right so you got to get people to pay attention first and they pay money second so this guy sucked at getting my attention well he had my attention but he was actually wasting my time and that's why i'm telling y'all this story of a way to not do it this is the way you don't do it all right if you're trying to get somebody's attention everything that i told you about this conversation don't do this these are the things not to do and one of the things the book that i'm reading right now is called outwitting the devil by napoleon hill and he said andrew carnegie told him not only should you do a study because the book think and grow rich is napoleon hill's that's a that book is a comp is a compilation of napoleon hill studying most successful people he knew for 20 years and andrew carnegie the guy who told him to do the job that ended up being that book he told him well listen napoleon if you're going to study success you should also study failure you should study not only what people do to become successful but what also what people are doing that makes them fail and not be successful because people need to know both sides of the coin so what y'all got to understand the reason i'm sharing you with with you this story is that you need to know what doesn't work too to make sure you're not the idiot doing this all right you don't be the person doing this the wrong way you don't want to do sales the wrong way you don't want to do communication the wrong way because what happens when you mess up in communication is that you rarely get a second chance to get it right all you familiar with the with the cliche you never get a second chance to make a first impression all of you have heard of that before right so you mess up the first time you basically killed your opportunity now you're not going to get a chance to do it right the next time because that person doesn't want to talk to you no more that person might decide you know what when he calls i'm not answering the phone no more you know if he texts me i'm not responding you know how phones are now you can just block a number without having to call remember you used to have to call the phone company to block a number you ain't got to do that no more you can just block somebody's number right from your phone so the point of it all this is this i say all that to say this ladies and gentlemen people skills people skills and basic communication skills basic and advanced communication skills i mean super advanced communication skills i'm going to cover all this in a book that i am putting out this year on communication and if you do not have people skills ladies and gentlemen it is limiting you whatever you're doing right now you are being limited in your business you're being limited in your friendships you're being limited in your intimate relationships whether the guys you're trying to get or the girls you're trying to get you're limited in these things if you lack communication skills because if you can't communicate you can't share with people what you're thinking and feeling and doing or who you are if you can't communicate with that with people you're unable to influence them and if you can't influence somebody then you're not going to be able to make them do you're not going to be able to get them to do what they want to do which is what you want them to do relating to people is a key but it's something that has to be explained to people in a way that they can understand it they got to be able to you got to be able to put it in a bite-sized chunk that anybody can understand because understand that you can't have the same type of conversation with a millionaire that you have with somebody who's making five dollars an hour it's two different types of conversations and i'm not saying that i'm not saying this because it's not a money conversation what i'm saying is when you're talking to one person you're talking to another person it's two different types of conversations you got to be able to have based on the type of person you're talking to you must be able to relate to a person on their level not on your level but on their level so when you're talking to somebody who's from the hood and all they know is what they've seen around them their entire lives you're having a different conversation than you're having with somebody who's from the suburbs and they got rich parents and they're studying to become a doctor there's two different types of conversations and if you can't tailor your conversation to each type of person you are limiting your ability to influence other people thusly limiting your potential in life because if you can't influence other people you won't have the ability to sell you won't have the ability to lead you won't have the ability to influence and get people to do things that you want them to do to end up becoming the things that they want to do that's all influence is you understand that and that's something that yes is adapting your conversation and it, it sounds very simple but it's a skill that most people lack and just telling people adapt your conversation they can't do that that's not enough information yes be a chameleon i understand all the points that people are saying these are cliche phrases that we all know the thing is you have to be able to you have to be able to well, what I'm going to do, let's put it that way. What I'm going to do in my book on communication and people skills is break it down in a way that people are able to understand it no matter where you come from, no matter what walk of life you're in, no matter what your experiences are. How to communicate with other people in a way that you're able to influence them to do things when they don't have to do them, but now they want to do them because of your skill of communication. Everybody understand what I'm saying right there? So anyway, my name is Dre All Day. As you can hear, I'm an author. I'm also a professional speaker. My background is I play sports. I play a little bit of basketball in a few countries for a few years. 
But anyway, my website is called DreAllDay.com. My first episode of my show on the Grant Cardone TV network is out right now. So go to DreAllDay.com slash GCTV. That'll take you to my first episode. It's about an hour-long episode. Came out today. Go check that episode out. I appreciate your support, Brittany Beauty. Any of you got a question, I also do coaching consultant. You want to hit me up on that? Hit me at Dre at DreAllDay.com. That is my Grant Cardone. So that is DreAllDay.com. That's my website. Slash GCTV. G is in Grant. C is in Car. G is in Giraffe. C is in Car. TV is in television. GCTV. So you go there, you'll see my show. And if you follow me on any social media, you'll see it. My Snapchat is at Dre Baldwin. Any of y'all got Snapchat? Hit me on Dre Baldwin. Yeah, did you see my show, Martin Matthews? If you look up, if you look up my show, you should see it. Maurice said he hasn't been on my scope in a while. Shout out to you, Maurice. I'm glad you're here now. You at you in the right place at the right time right now, brother. So any of y'all watch Grant Cardone TV if you don't watch it now, because then you can see me. What's up, Jay Tiffany? So this year I got 10 books coming out. My books are going to be about, I'm putting out a quote book. It's called, it's going to be about my, my Dreisms, you know. A quote book, I'm doing a book with some, some of my best posts from social media that people found, you know, inspirational, motivational. I'm doing a book called Dre Philosophy. That's about just the way that I think. Some of my philosophies on life, I'm actually putting out a couple volumes of that. They might not all be this year, but at least the first couple are going to be this year. I'm doing a book on sales, a book on communication. I'm putting out a book on how to interact with the opposite sex for young men. I can't really write one for women because I'm not a woman. But for you young men who want to improve your skills and talking to the opposite sex, I'm writing a book on how to do that and how to do it efficiently, correctly, and do it in a way that makes sense. You don't want to do it in a, in a way that you burn bridges. You want to win friends and influence people even when you're talking to females. Trust me. And there's a way to do that. There's a right way and there's a wrong way. And I'm, uh, I'm going to work with all y'all on that in my books. I'm going to work with y'all on that on webinars I got coming out. On my show on the Grant Cardone Network, my podcast on Grant Cardone Network, also Athlete on Fire. My website, DreAllDay.com. These Periscope streams here, my YouTube videos, the books at DreAllDay.com slash Amazon. As y'all can see, I got a lot going on, but that's what I like to do. Uh, definitely. Oh, Jay Tiffany, I got you. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Any dates when the books come out? Not yet, because we still putting the finishing touches on them. Have problems people speaking to people and girls? Well, guess what? I'm going to handle that. I'm going to handle that problem for you. So all you got to do is stay close to me. One quote that I like to say, I stole it from Diddy. He says, stay close to the money. And when he says stay close to the money, it don't necessarily mean currency and legal tender. That means anything that you want in life, stay close to the people who already got it, who know how to do it. And if you stay close to the money, you ain't got no choice but to have a couple dollars trickle down in your pocket. So if you stay close to the money, you're going to learn this stuff. Well, Brittany, I'm going to help you out too. So I'm catching up and working with Uncle G now. Yes, Maurice, I got a show on that. I got a show on that network. If you go to the Grant Cardone TV network, you should see a show called Work On Your Game with Dre All Day. Just go to his website, you'll see it. Or just go to dreallday.com slash GCTV. Yeah, I actually stole that quote. So it's my quote now. I just credited him one time. I'm not crediting him no more. Stay close to the money. That's the phrase that I like to use. And that's a metaphor, ladies and gentlemen. It doesn't necessarily mean money. It means influence. It means information. If it means having power if it means having friends that's what it means all right stay close to the money if you stay close to me all the things that i tell you that i talk about i'm gonna cover this year in books and webinars and podcasts and blog posts and periscope streams and if you see me in person i'll tell you and i'll tell you to your face too ladies and gentlemen if you're not following me make sure you follow me now i think i've given you enough reasons to follow me if you didn't have one before so yo y'all have a great night my favorite bookstore is the iBookstore. <laughs> Y'all have a great night. My name's Dre all day. You want to talk to me directly, hit me on Snapchat at Dre Baldwin or send me an email, Dre at DreAllDay.com. I'm going to holler at y'all later. Work on your game. Y'all know I wrote a book, right? It's called Buy Again.